Hi, I'm Peter J. Ray. Welcome to Adventures in History. Today's topic is Dearest Mother, Love Ruthie. Ruth Smallshaw Ray's Letters to Her Mother, 1951, Part 61. 1560 Luxor Road, East Cleveland, Ohio, April 2nd, 1951. Dearest Mother, Daddy, and Bud, How happy we are for you that you have a nice new car. I think that you're, you're a very progressive dear to go ahead and get one, for that really is the only way to ever accomplish anything. I'm proud of you and certainly do hope you learn to drive real soon. You'll probably beat me. Although I did learn to drive in Florida, I've lost most of it now, and especially in Cleveland traffic. John wants me to go to the Automobile Club, AAA, where they teach you driving, parking, all the rules, so you can get your license for $20. But I'd really prefer to wait until he has time to let me practice. However, all the fellows say it's better to go to AAA after you're married. I guess the most important thing now that you have a car is to all cooperate about it and get all the enjoyment possible out of it. Don't worry about the car payments, Daddy. The time will pass quickly, and as long as you stay working steadily, it'll be something that will add greatly to your enjoyment of life. I believe John's payments were about twice that, and the time went so fast. You will have to be careful of it. John is always listening for little noises and takes it into the garage often, and that you'll, you'll find after it's a year old will be the item, the upkeep. However, John doesn't pay them the second time if they failed to fix something up the first time. He's really quite particular about it when I don't even hear a sound, but that's best, I guess. We do hope you'll be careful and not unfortunate enough to have any accidents. However, don't blame each other if anything does happen, but it's best to be careful for yourself and the other driver, too. As we know, some things are unavoidable. Well, all this you know, and have fun. It'll be so nice that you can take a trip to Estevan. Wish you could hop down here as easily. I was so glad that you understood about our graduations. I'd been afraid you might feel hurt, but it was better than having you come then and John so busy. As a matter of fact, he tells me classes will be until 10.30, so 11 o'clock p.m. before he gets home, and then supper. We've been in the past two weekends, so he's been either at school or studying for about 20 evenings straight. And as he says, the cheese is getting binding, whatever that means. The first weekend we were rather broke, so I watched television next door. <clears throat> we're saving $325 a month now and are quite proud of ourselves. All our furniture and debts are paid even my Canadian income tax, dentist, insurances, all for now anyway. However, we'll need the cash savings if John ever decides to go into law and quit De Beckman. However, I went to Good Friday service and we went to church on Easter and I took communion. John got me a real cute Easter bunny as a pal for the teddy bear he gave me a couple of years ago. He's so nice. John, I mean. Thank you for the nice Easter card, dear. This weekend we plan to go out, but I've had the flu. I feel better now. Really, John is such a wonderful person. I always thought men were rather immature, but he is so mature and capable. He fixed breakfast, did the dishes, did the weekly shopping, cleans the bathroom, vacuums the rug, takes in the laundry, pays all the bills by check, and figures out where every cent will go. Gets library books for me, cold tablets, Kleenex, cough medicine, throat discs, penicillin tablets, does his studying, and even packed his own lunch for work so we could save a little bit. Why, you couldn't think of anything he isn't nice about. He even tries to under understand me. I've started reading again. For so long, I've had so much in the way of assignments for school and no time for anything outside, 
and find that I've been literally starved for just books. John enjoys reading so much and says he'd prefer not getting a television and to catch up on our reading when we graduate. So far, I've just read anything I can find. Main Street by F. Scott Fitzgerald. Editor's note, Sinclair Lewis wrote Main Street. I think it would appeal to you, Mother. It's a few years ago, but reminds me of you in a little bit of a way. King's Row by Sinclair Lewis you probably have read or have seen the movie. I hadn't. Thunder Out of China and Madame Curie you've read, I think. Gloria, my roommate at the co-op, writes from Seattle that she's going to have her baby in September when Wayne and Ann Duff will. They were married the same month, too. Mary is already ten days overdue and has taken castor oil and quinine, but it worked every way but didn't bring the baby on. She's been expecting it any time for five weeks now, as the doctor predicted it would be early, and she looks lovely. This is a good time of year to have a baby. They say May has the healthiest babies because they get a good start before the winter sets in. I feel sort of like a fish out of water. For so many years I was only interested in teaching and having a good time and always had lots in common with Marion. Then at the co-op had the same interests as the kids. Suddenly, however, I have become so domesticated. I guess it's the novelty but I have much greater interest being home and in school less. I sort of got it into my head that this would be my last year teaching, for now anyway, and had the days counted. I've turned down several summer play kindergarten and nursery jobs, one paying $50 a week. Good pay for a temporary job. However, John feels that with the uncertainty of him going into law, it wouldn't be wise to have a family yet. He also feels that we should have a a year free from school every night. So I'm going to teach another year. They wanted me to decide before Easter at school, so that's why we had to look ahead. I went to see about other jobs, art jobs, and whereas they say I have talent, I need further training. Both the director of the Art Institute and at the American Greetings Card Company. They said they'd consider me for a trainee's position, but they only pay $185 and $200 after a year, so as long as I'm going to work, I might as well do what I can best. I guess I always have to have my yearly spring crises. After I took communion, it suddenly seemed all right, and next year didn't loom as black as I felt it would. They have a man substitute for me, and Miss Bender said the kids get out of hand. They are a lively bunch. It really was quite amazing how my point of view changed. However, as John said, Poor Red, she feels left out with all her friends having babies. There are so many things I'd like to talk to you about. I'd like to tell you, I'd like you to tell me how how I should do the hardwood floors. A cleaning woman did them and waxed them before we moved in, and John says not to touch them until my summer holidays and I can do all the cleaning I want then. It's just the floor around the rug and in the bathroom bedroom. Now I'll tell you of the best way I've found to do the kitchen floor. It's sort of rubberized, built-in linoleum, I guess. First with Ajax, then rinse with Clorox in water, and then glow coat. After the glow coat shines by itself, it's good for a month, with only a rinse once a week in between. Oh, but I remember you have a polisher. But what I meant to say was that, have you ever seen one of these sponge self-ringer mops? We got one from the Fuller Brush Man, and it's wonderful, and you don't even have to get your hands wet. John's all for anything to minimize work. And a big, unbreakable comb from the Fuller Brush Man. And blonde furniture is amazing. I doubt if you'll be changing your style of furniture now, But if Bud and Doris like modern furniture, blonde is so easy to keep. We have one dark piece, a wee radio of John's grandmother, and I can dust it, and a minute later it's dusty again. But blonde wood never looks dusty. And our bedspread is quilted. 
chenille makes so much lint. However, this has to be dry cleaned. They now have very attractive crinkle crepe ones in dark colors too. They're even easier to keep. About the present, pink bedspread. It'll be bulky to send and also there might be duty on it. I'm sure it must be nice. The planning to send something smaller. I'm planning to send something smaller to Isabel. If Connie were getting married, she might like it. If I had a little girl in about seven years, she might like it, which is rather long to wait. If Bud and Doris get married, I suppose they'd be insulted. Well, wait and see if something turns up. I'm enclosing a very good recipe for a bridge party. Oh, we'd be real proud to see you pouring tea and wearing our flowers, so hope you'll do that. Probably more use than on Easter. Wish we could send some from here. After Easter, prices went down, and violet corsages were 39 cents, as were gardenias. Oh, John also got me a movie magazine in place of an Easter card. I'd been dying to see one with my rabbit. And we dyed Easter eggs at school, and John and I dyed some here. Nice. John's mother sent us a big Easter egg with each of our names on it. It was the same kind she sent John last year. I remember I used to go to the co-op and hint I was hungry for candy until he'd cut me off a little piece. He doled it out to me for a month. Very good. Sort of an, a maple nut fudge center. Unusual. They now have untaxed colored oleo for the past year, and we use only oleo and don't know the difference. John was testing the wrappers in the lab and has bought about 10 pounds home this winter. Did I tell you that John's mother and Dick came in the Saturday before Easter? We had a nice visit and went out for dinner. I had fried shrimp. Good. She bought me some six little jello molds and they are so useful. I make up a jello vegetable or fruit salad and it does for several meals as salad. So useful when I'm in a hurry after school. She brought John nylon shorts. They're so soft and smooth, so pretty, and no ironing. Very nice. I finally got used to a potato peeler and like it very much better than a paring knife. Do they have ready whip whipped cream in cans? It's so good for on top of desserts and lasts so long. I'll find out what picture Dick would like and do let Bud have the one he wants. <clears throat> I'd like a set of unframed about the same size for my book. I have all the other pictures in now. What ones are? do you have left over? Have you ever tried polishing all your silver at once? When it's in a chest, it doesn't usually need it, but for the everyday silver or pieces not in the chest, you can boil water in an aluminum cake pan or pot and add a teaspoon of soda and one teaspoon of salt if the pan is small and two if it's large. Keep the water hot and put the silver and the silver cleans by itself. I was amazed at even old decorated pieces how shining they got. My problem was, was the, to clean the pan afterwards, but a soap pad soon scoured it up. Oh, I'm having fun with these little ideas. I also like gla glass wax for cleaning mirrors and windows better than bon ami, and for the car windows and car itself, it's so easy. John got the car simonized the other day, and it looks so nice. You can see the white wall tires again. So sorry the plasters are leaving you. I sometimes think how nice it would be to have you near and think how nice that you're near your old friends, of course Bud too. I like the cake mixes so much, especially Duff's Spice Cake Mix. Just mix it with applesauce from cans and it's so good and quick. I made a good cake last week but it took five eggs. I try to cook a roast once a week now that I have more time. Of course, it's only 20 minutes in the pressure cooker. Steak is over a dollar a pound and roasts 80 cents a pound. So high, but we have to eat. We had such lovely weather. 
Then it turned cold before Easter and snowed over the crocuses. It's dry now, but still cold, 44 degrees. You really have the snow. Connie writes that her mother was up during the blizzard. She says she heard Marshall is getting married, and his family are leaving him the house and the businesses. Nice start for a young man. I hope he'll be happy. I think one of the nicest things about being married to John is that he never loses his temper. He's so nice and calm and, and not moody. Oh, we had the most beautiful, perfect rainbow last week. A perfect arc over one-third of the sky and a double one, too. A dimmer reflection above it. So beautiful, and you could see all the colors in it. The first perfect rainbow I've ever seen, and it lasted about half an hour. John has quite a detailed description for you of the difference between different lawyers. Down here, they're much the same, I guess, now. Yes, Bonnie's birthday is May 30th. I'll send her address. Hope you have a nice corsage and tea and a good trip to Estevan. Have fun. Love you, John and Ruth. Hi, bud. 1560 Luxor Road, East Cleveland, Ohio, April 2nd, 1951. Dear Mother, I thought Daddy might like to see the kind of thing we have on our tests in American gov government. What do you think of the Kefauver hearings? Everyone was watching them on television. They've really banned bingo in Cleveland and Cuyahoga County, the county we're in. I guess it's become a big gambling game. I used to see the places just packed with women in the middle of the afternoon. Hope these streetcar tickets aren't out of date. I expect they are and don't know how long I've had them. Also have some from Winnipeg, Edmonton, and Saskatoon ones. Love, Ruth. 1560 Luxor Road, East Cleveland, Ohio, April 8th, 1951. Dearest Mother, Hi, dear. I have a hundred pages of American government to read this afternoon, but thought I'd like a little chat with you first. I am a wee bit lonesome, but John thinks that's understandable when a movie last night was the first time we'd been out for amusement in three weeks, and of that I'd been in bed with the flu for a month, for a week. At three o'clock a week ago Thursday, I had a tickle in my throat. By six o'clock I had a sore throat, and by nine o'clock I couldn't talk, and so the old flu set in. I had bad chest pains, too. I thought I could go to school Tuesday, but the nurse sent me home, and Miss Bayes, our principal, drove me home. By Friday, though, I went back again, and am okay now, but I am a bit restless, and with John's comprehensive exams in three weeks, he's sticking to the books. So I said, hopefully, let's talk about Christmas. To make matters worse, they've added a Saturday afternoon class at 1 o'clock p.m. and a Sunday morning 9 o'clock a.m. class. So he'll be going to school every night or day for the next two weeks. I hope he keeps well. Mary had her baby, an 8-pound, 3-ounce baby girl, after 15 and a half hours of active labor. 24 hours from the time she started, and she's feeling fine, and they say looking wonderful, although I couldn't go up because of the flu. But what a big baby for such a little girl, and she didn't look big either, and has enough milk for five babies. They're calling her Susan Lynn Rosenthal. We're having a shower for Vera next Saturday night. I'm eager to hear if you have your car if you've made the trip to Estevan, and if you're still planning a trip down here, and when. July should be good. Oh, I thought of another couple of things that I or we think are quite good ideas. Have you ever tried liquid soap for washing dishes? It comes in a, in a bottle, and you use just a capful at a time, and it lasts so long. We found it much cheaper than rink so or any other soap. Vera and Alex suggested we try it, and we like it. And contour sheets. We didn't get any sheets for wedding presents, and John's mother gave us his grandmother's. 
I bought two contour sheets for the bottom, and are, are they ever labor savers? They never wrinkle or come untucked, but fit tightly, corners under the mattress. From now on, it will be all I'll buy for the bottom sheets. John's aunt and uncle in Marion had them, so that's why we tried them. The most fun we've had is trying to find easier ways of doing things, or cheaper. This is our meatless week to cut the grocery bill. We'll have steakettes a couple of times and a tuna fish casserole, and we'll appreciate a roast next week all the more. John reads me some of his cases every once in a while. They're quite interesting, and I even manage to get the right decisions sometimes. John's dad just phoned, and in talking he asked what your name was. Gus. Our tulips are up three inches. I love you. Ruth. 1560 Luxor Road, East Cleveland, Ohio, April 24th, 1951. Dearest Mother, you couldn't know how much I've appreciated your last few letters, and when they've come, simply eaten them up. John remarked that you'd written quite frequently lately, and I said that you probably could feel that I'm a little homesick or just plain lonesome lately. Honestly, Mother, I don't know how you've stood it all these years. At least when John's away so much of the time, I can console myself that it's all in a good cause. But I realize more than ever that you've had just cause for complaint. There was a time when I felt that you should plan more things for yourself to take an interest in alone, since you never had any companionship or very little from Daddy. But I see now how much easier that is said than done. It's not so hard to fill in the odd night here and there, but a steady diet of it can drive you batty. Another thing that I see now more clearly than before we were married. When you're single, there's an element of excitement and, and interest in going bowling or to the movies that just isn't there when you go out, when you go with just friends. And two, there isn't the incentive to go out when you have a home nor the companions available. So the choice remains to stay home and be somewhat contented but with a vague, lonesome feeling or initiate an interest in outside things and be somewhat bored. I'm not complaining for myself, for goodness knows John has enough to do. But as I say, I deeply reg regret that you've had so much of it. When I come home from school, I am tired and find enough things to do and can always keep myself occupied. But I finally determined I should get out more, visited Vera in the hospital a couple of times, and went bowling with Ada. But the old sparkle just wasn't there, and I was anxious to get home to make John's supper at 10 o'clock p.m. The weekend seemed long with him at school Saturday and all day Sunday. This week he's taken his holidays, and it's so nice to find him here at home when I get home and have supper at a decent hour. His exams begin tomorrow night, and he does look tired but still cheerful, and I certainly admire his industry. I had a small test last night. Hope I didn't do too bad. What has the Canadian opinion been on all this Douglas MacArthur Fuhrer? It looks as if the American public are in favor of his ideas, but to hear our American government professor, he hasn't been so wise, and he thinks President Harry Truman has been right. I've been inclined to agree with President Truman and Omar Bradley and would hate to see the conflict widen or for us to pour our lifeblood into China. Didn't some of your biblical history predict that the Chinese civilization would outlast us all? Say, I'd like to, I'd like to send Norma something. She was so good to us as kiddies for years. I've planned to send a parcel for her and the boys. Maybe you have some suggestions of what they might like. She really has had quite a struggle. I'm going to Cincinnati Friday with Miss Bender to the convention. We'll come back Sunday. It'll be a good weekend to be away since John will be studying, although last weekend would have been even better. We had the shower for Vera a week ago Saturday. And last Wednesday, she had a baby boy, six pounds, six ounces. Very cute baby, Gregory. 
She had a short labor, only four hours, a couple of stitches, but said she had a bad time, although the doctor told Alex it was the easiest delivery he'd ever seen. She told me so many of the details that John said I was crying in the night. I dreamed I was in another car accident, went through labor, and couldn't have a baby. Oh, our tulips have grown so much, and the lawn needs cutting already. One of my kitties brought me some daffodils today. Lovely. I've been reading a very interesting book that you might enjoy, too. The Saskatchewan by Marjorie Wilkins Campbell. It's a new book, and I'm the first to take it from the library. I think you'd enjoy hearing a little of the Saskatchewan River history. You'd recall seeing boats on the lake when you were young, and I guess steamboat was quite a means of travel in the 1800s, although at times not so successful. I learned more history of Saskatchewan from this book than all my years in school, and think it would be a, it would be good it would be a, a good book for all natives to read. For I realized since leaving home how little I know of our own district. I thought you might be interested in seeing this write-up of that old man we sat besides in church that Sunday. Had no money in his wallet, but worth th- but worth three million dollars. Ed- editor's note. William G. Mather had died at age 93. I love you and like the pictures of the car. Love, John and Ruth. To be continued. Well, that concludes today's presentation. Good luck to you with your efforts in family history. If this interests you, finding, preserving, and sharing old letters, diaries, and photographs, and interviewing elderly relatives while they're alive, you might consider checking out our website, Adventures in History with Peter J. Ray at peterjray.com. So far, we have made 571 history videos in seven areas. World history, American history, book reviews, poetic tours, Cleveland baseball, family history, and autobiography. You also might consider checking out our podcast, Adventures in History, which you can listen to on Spotify, Breaker, Google Podcasts, and Radio Public. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. God bless you. Take care. And I'll see you next time.